So we've got this first position now. Now let's look a little bit deeper at that position. Uh, what we need to know are what are the notes that we're playing in this particular uh, scale, this A minor pentatonic. Now you don't need to memorize all the notes for all the scales at this point, but I want you to see how this is going to work because this is going to be the first little trick that we've got. I'm playing the notes A, C, D, E, and G. And then I simply keep going. A, C, D, E, G. And then I keep going. A, C, and I run out of strings. So in this one position right here, my one four, one three, one three, one three thing, I'm playing the notes A, C, D, E, and G. And I'm playing those for almost two and a half octaves. Okay, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, and then I run out of strings, okay? Now, logically, if the, the notes I'm playing in my scale are A, C, D, E, and G, don't those notes exist down there? below the 5th fret? Well, of course they do. And don't they exif exist above the 8th fret? Again, of course they do. So that's where the trick comes in is, well, what's the easiest way to memorize all of this, put it together, and start making music with it? And that's what I want to help you with. So to finish up this first position, we have one other thing we're going to look at. We're going to look at where are the roots? Where are the A's, right? When you're in the key of G, your root is G. When you're in the key of D, your root is D, okay? So we want to know where the A's are. Well, logically, we've got an A here, and we've got an A here, because those are both E strings, so they're both A's at the fifth fret here. And we've also got an A on the seventh fret of the fourth string. And that's really nice to know, because once you start learning how to solo in things, those A's, because you're in the key of A, become kind of a, a target note for your movements. You start wanting to go to those, right? It, it kind of connects what you're doing with a solo or a, you know, a melody or something with the chord that's being played underneath you. So it's really nice to know where those are. Okay, so now let's start trying to figure out how we're going to connect to these other positions. First things first, we know the notes are A, C, D, E, and G. So just from a visual standpoint, I want you to see this. If I was to take all five of those notes and place them on the sixth string, A, C, D, E, and G. A, C, D, E, and G. That's giving me 5th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, and 15th fret. And if you don't know the notes on your 6th string, I would strongly recommend you start learning those as well because it's going to make this whole process a lot easier further down the road. So, A, C, D, E, and G. Well, after G, we just start all over the next octave. So I've got A and C and D and E. I've got 24 frets, so I've got another E up there. If you don't, it doesn't make any difference. The point is, I could take those five pentatonic notes and place them on the sixth string. And I could do the same thing on the fifth string and the fourth string and the third string and so on. Okay, But that's kind of a tedious way of learning how to play this pentatonic scale. But what I do want you to see is, is if I was to take these notes on the sixth string, A, C, D, E, and G, and imagine what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a bridge on all six strings from each one of those notes. A, I just built a bridge. It was called my first position. On C, I'm going to build another bridge, and it's going to be called my second position. On D, I'm going to build another bridge, and it's called my third position. E, another bridge, is going to be called my fourth position. And G, another one, which is going to be my fifth position. So from each one of those roots, I'm going to build a position using the notes A, C, D, E, and G. Now, they, all, they won't always be in that order, obviously, because like when I'm in my first position, my first note is A. But if I move to this note, which we're going to learn is our second position, the first note would be C. If we move to this one, our first note would be D, okay? And it's okay. The A is still in there somewhere. The C is still in there somewhere. The D is still in there somewhere. They're just in a different order because you're moving up the fretboard into a different position, okay? So think about that as we keep going. Now, the next step, and then you're going to be ready to go because then you're going to have the whole understanding of this. With this first position that we're looking at right now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about it as two parts, the front side and the back side. 
The front side is all fives. The back side is eight, seven, 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 eight, eight. What I'm doing is I'm visualizing five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. But I'm just breaking it into two pieces. I've got my side over here, which is all my fives, and my side over here, which is eight, seven, 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 eight, eight. Okay, the front side and the back side. Now what happens is when you go to the second position, you're going to be using the back side of the first position, which is going to be the front side of your second position. These positions just fit together like puzzle pieces. And you've put together a puzzle before, I'm sure, right? They just connect together. Okay, well, that's what's going to be happening here. So this first position is the first puzzle piece. We want to snap the second puzzle piece on there. The second puzzle piece is the second position. And it's going to be using 877788. But it's going to have a new back side. So the second position looks like this. It goes 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. So it's a little bit more awkward in its visualization. Okay? 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. Now, we're not going to get into the fingering and all that stuff. That's a whole other conversation. What I want you to learn how to do is be able to visualize these. Because the fingers that you're using to play these scale positions are going to change depending on what you're doing in the real world. And I'll show you that in just a minute here. So 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. And here's the trick is now this 8, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8 is kind of the membrane in between these two. Okay, you got the fives over here and then it connects to this middle membrane here. And over here, you've got 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10. So you're kind of visualizing these two positions, well, not even kind of, you're visualizing these two positions together connected. So what you can start doing is kind of learning, well, how do I move through here? Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Listen, if you're ready to take your guitar playing to the next level, then I'd like to invite you to go to guitarzoom.com and sign up for a VIP membership, which gives you first access to my premium lessons each month, which are customized for your specific goals and skill level. Now, it's an awesome community of guitar players that love to play, have fun, and support each other's goals, and we'd love to have you join us. So go to guitarzoom.com and sign up for VIP today.